I was asked to speak on what's going on in Alaska and the Alaska State Legislature legal um, issues. So um, we're going to go ahead and jump in. Just to tell you just a tad about myself, um, I used to work for Johnson & Johnson. And I worked for um, Bristol Myers Squibb. I was the first district business manager up here. I had a very successful career, and I did sell monoclonal antibodies. I do want you guys to know that. I was in the biotech field. I was also chief operating officer at Medical Park Family Care. And um, I, I was a house representative for six years, and I'm, this, I'm going into my fourth year as a senator. So just, just high level, in case you didn't know. Um, this is just to show that I'm very busy. I'm on a lot of committees, and um, a member of a lot, there's a lot on here uh, that, that, I, that I am that's not on here as well. But I would like to just highlight that because of my battle with exposing what's been going on. It's been a really, really rough year. I will tell you, I got beyond on Alaska Airlines and I want you to know that I had a mask on the entire time at TSA, an entire time on Alaska Airlines flight, and um, the entire time during the waiting area, you guys. I, that, there's gonna be a lot more to that story, but it's gonna be at a later date. Um, I also lost my chairmanship. Nobody really gave me a solid reason um, why that happened, but I will tell you that I believe it was because I was exposing tyranny and fighting the governor very, very hard um, in regards to um, the, the legislative branch is the one who writes laws. The executive branch executes laws, and I was fighting that. I was defending, and I told my leadership and my team that the most important thing for me was legislative supremacy and to make sure that we stood our ground as legislators. The next one is key committees leadership matters. There's a few people in deep state and very strong special interests that control everything. You guys, raise your hand, you, you, you legislators out there. You know what I'm talking about. So um, I just want to really quick highlight who is in charge in the Senate. Uh, McChickie, uh, Hughes, you guys can see. Health and Social Services has been a key role. Uh, Senator Wilson from the Matt Sioux. Uh, Labor and Commerce, which I'm encouraging her really much to stand up. She's a, a good a good person to work with. Uh, Senator Costello, uh, State Affairs, Senator Shower, uh, and Finance Co-Chair Stedman and Bishop. I, I think you guys, it's important to know that the House is kind of a, a mess. Um, Stutes is the, is the speaker. Uh, Tuck, <laughs> Health and Social Services, Olkuski, it's very, very important with all these mandates. And uh, Clayman is the Judiciary Chair. And uh, I want to say it's my representative, Representative Merrick, that crossed over and allowed the chaos to happen in the House. And the chaos rolled over into the Senate. So it has been a very, very challenging, brutal year that no matter how hard we work, we can work 12 or 14 hour because of a few crossover rhinos. They kind of destroy everything that we do during elections and, and betray their constituents. So I'll tell you, it's been, it's been tough. Two bills that I thought was super important that I sponsored was um, one, we got to get back to the basics, the Constitution. This was a, a bill that said that you had to read the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, and the state Constitution, sign that you read them before you're sworn in. You file it so your people can hold accountable. People forget the most important things. Another bill that I proposed was nullification of federal law. And I know the lawyers made a really good point that if it's unconstitutional, it's unconstitutional. I get that. But we needed extra layers. Uh, sadly, uh, Senator McChickie referred this simple little bill to four committees. That's what you do to a minority member that you can't stand. The simplest things I was getting punished around every corner for fighting tyranny. But that was one thing that I found completely unacceptable acceptable. Let's go ahead and move on to um, we the people. This is such an important concept and every student needs to be taught this, that the governance of the consent of the approved. We the people. The government cannot do stuff that we the people do not consent. It's so important. It's considered one of the most basic essential rights. It's an irrevocable right to be enjoyed by all citizens. It was, it's obviously in the preamble. Um, the United States Constitution, so important right here. I want to just highlight once again the preamble, we the people. And this is to the secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, future generations. Article 6, a lot of people may not be real familiar with, but Article 6 is that the United States Constitution is the supreme law of the land. People want to be little rule followers or ordinance followers or laws or whatever. The bottom line is there has to be a pecking order. 
the supreme law of the land is the Constitution. So even in the legislature, you'll see on the Senate floor that the supreme law of the land is the Constitution. If you get confused, I think everyone would be in a straitjacket if you followed every law, federal regulation, everybody, you know, everything. Just keep your eye on the supreme law of the land, the Constitution. The First Amendment, establishing that, that Congress shall make no law regarding religion, prohibiting the exercise of, abridging the freedom of speech, Facebook, the, the press, the right of the people to peaceably assembly, and to petition their government for redress of grievances. Very important, and I'm not gonna get into the history, but I also have family members that helped fight and were punished uh, for fighting for the First Amendment rights way back. That will be a, a time for another day. What happened in Alaska? Here we're getting to what happened in Alaska. Senate Bill 241, the disaster declaration. We had really good disaster declaration um, in March 26th, uh, 2020. A uh, pretty bad bill was passed, and uh, I'm going to just highlight it. then 18 mandates proceeded. Uh, public and private schools were closed. This is where the executive branch I thought was completely out of line. Uh, mandate 10, they chose who was essential, who was non-essential. Arbitrary application. This was outrageous. I was reading every one of them as they came off the press. This also included criminal penalties and uh, misdemeanors and even if a death happened, $2.5 million fines. Mandate 11, even people had no symptoms, they were not allowed to visit loved ones in the hospital. You guys have got to know that the executive branch in the state of Alaska started everything that happened in this state on every level pretty much. So people need to understand, if you wanna go back, I've got copies of every single mandate. These are the pro things that when I was reading them, that was really bothering me. They taught us how to assemble Easter baskets. They taught us how that we had to park our cars six feet apart <laughs> for church. Then we were not allowed to have clergy interactions. Traveling was prohibited between communities. Even for your significant other, you were not allowed to go to other communities. This is part of health alerts and you were not allowed to quarantine in your RV. This is when my shackles came up. I said, you just declared war on the legislature, in my opinion. This is absolutely outrageous. It's not only illogical. They misapplied isolation laws, etc. So what did we do? I started Constitutional Freedom Fighters the first week of April 2020. And uh, we got almost 8,000 signatures on a petition. I believe we have the petition in the back. It's also up on Facebook, Constitutional Freedom Fighters. And uh, this was our petition. We compared the constitutions and we compared every mandate. I just posted on Facebook, does anyone want? I had 12 people sign up and we started uh, Forged Ahead and we did constitutional and we did a petition and then we took that petition and I printed it, it and I believe it was May 17th, 2020 on the Senate floor and it only lost, I believe, by one vote. We almost was able to strip the governor's powers way back in May of 2020. where we were, we were looking for leaders to rise, and it was uh, American Frontline Doctors and their Vaccine Bill of Rights we started working on right away. And uh, I just wanna say, uh, Dr. Simone Gold, and uh, thank you so much, Colton Boyles, and everybody else who's been involved in the Frontline Doctors. Um, we, we took a lot of our power and strength from this. The emergency use products are sp specifically prohibited by federal law from being mandated. You gotta know your rights so you can stand your ground. The CDC advisory panel on immunization practices affirmed that emergency use experimental ma vaccines cannot be mandated. I said this like a dozen times on the Senate floor. The Nuren code, Nuremberg Code, we've talked about that. It prohibits any type of coercive action at all for individuals to participate in any type of medical experience. This came after World War II. This is very, very important. And then the uh, Vaccine Bill of Rights, which we've been working on in the Senate, um, was uh, that, that uh, from American Frontline Doctors, it's neither feasible nor safe to mandate experimental vaccines. Um, they failed to exclude the recovered patients. I know a lot of people, how many of you have had COVID here? Raise your hands. Yeah, <laughs> natural immunity. And I'm gonna point out Roger, uh, Senator Roger Holland, he worked on a super good amendment um, that uh, helped protect natural immunity. So thank you. 
Again, the Vaccine Bill of Rights is uh, digital health IDs. They pose substantial risk to personal privacy in Article 1, Section 22. Read your constitutions, everybody. It's so short. You can do it in like 30 minutes, and, and you will be so emboldened and so empowered. I, I try to do it on um, Constitution Day uh, every year. Uh, but they pose um, risks to our privacy and um, also informed consent. If you're not informed yourself, you can't give informed consent. Private businesses operating within the jurisdiction have no legal authority to require or mandate or coerce medications or experimental medications to any persons. And as you know, even OSHA has pulled back um, recently. I think it was really important to point out that CDC, um, a lot of people calling them the cult of the CDC and health right now. Some people are following them blindly, but I will tell you that uh, wake up if you are. Um, but they've changed the definition of vaccine. Pre-2015, it was an injection of a killed or weakened uh, organism in order to prevent a disease. In 2015, it changed it to the act of introducing a vaccine into the body to have some immunity. In September 2021, the act of introducing a vaccine into the body to produce protection from a specific disease. I think that's very important to note. The definition of vaccine has not changed in the Alaska state statute. Vaccine means a preparation of a killed microorganism, living attenuated organism. Bottom line is it's to, for specific immunity to life-threatening or dis disabling diseases. So it's very important that the state statute is very strong. Many lawyers tonight have already talked about informed consent. It is so powerful that you guys understand informed consent. You've got to know the nature of the illness. You have to have the description of the procedure. This is what you can demand. The probable outcome, the most likely risks and side effect, as well as complications, and reasonable alternatives, including risks, benefits, complications, and the alternative with non-treatment. I will tell you, I have to say to my sister, Dr. Farr, thank you. I just recovered from COVID, been negative for about 10 days now. I recovered very quickly on ivermectin and I'm just thankful for bold doctors that are willing to, to do that. So a lot of people are rolling over and saying, oh, trying to just take the jab, you know. If they want it, you know, that's their choice. But, but I, I think people need to be empowered and emboldened. This is a legal memo I got from um, our legal team um, at Legislative Legal. And I fought all session to make sure that we could opt out for any reason. Medical, ask Roger, ask everybody. I was obsessed uh, since January. I wanted to be, people to be able to opt out, not just for religious reasons, but for philosophical reasons, for medical reasons, for religious, for anything. Well, I worked it really hard and I got it passed multiple times in the Senate and in the House, but then there was always some little repealer because the governor would switch from a declaration to emergency disaster or something. Something was always going on. So I finally asked legal in September in our fourth, I think it was our fourth special session, um, I asked them, do Alaskans still have the right to opt out for any any reason? And uh, basically, I got the best memo I've ever had from Ledge Legal and basically said, we're not an opt out state. We're an opt-in state. Informed consent law is so strong in, this, in Alaska that we have to consent and we have to choose every single to opt into every medical treatment. So every single Alaskan has the right to refuse. <laughs> so I, I think that's fantastic news. So we have someone from the uh, Health Defense, so Children's Health Defense, so thank you very much, Dr. Nas. I'm super happy you're here. Um, federal law prohibits um, the emergency use of the test. The PCR tests are emergency use, by the way, too. They cannot be mandated. That's why I fought in Juneau so hard, because I knew my rights. I never would submit to Beacon. I never would, and I never showed them a full test with my name and everything on it because I knew my rights. And so I refused, and I had my staff put under duress, under coercive, every time they had to go and, and, and do that because I passionately disagreed with what the legislator was, legislature was doing. And um, as you know, um, um, I, I, uh, they were trying to fire my staff. They were trying to lock me out of the Capitol. They were trying to move my office. They were doing all sorts of stuff. And all as I was doing was standing my ground. So it was a very, very tough session, you guys, for me. But I think it's super, super important that every single person, you stand your ground. You have to. 
Every, nobody can fight for you at this point. You've got to fight for yourself. And you're being empowered and equipped, and it's now up to you to pass, the, pass it on. I was trying to be respectful with a face shield. I was taking the PCR test on my terms when I wanted to, where I wanted to. And, uh, and I promised everybody that if I was sick at all, I would stay home. Thank goodness I didn't get sick all session. But anyway, um, let's go on to um, the Pfizer. We talked about camaraderie. It is not available, to my knowledge, in the United States. Um, and so all of these, these shots that are being given it, are not technically FDA approved. And so people have got to know they cannot be mandated. And I've said it so much on the radio and everything, it's people's responsibility to know their rights. Coercion is criminal. What is coercion? AS 1141530. This is a person commits the crime of coercion if a person compels another to engage in conduct which there is a legal right to abstain. So anybody who's being told that they could lose their job, that is coercion. People need to understand there are serious criminal fines. Empower, embolden your people to stand up against this. They asked what else have I done? So um, I just wanted you guys to know that um, I did become an honorary commander. I want to thank Stanley Wright for nominating me for that in the governor's office. But I fought really hard. I, took, I just did a press release and an op-ed uh, basically against any type of forcing the military to, to wear masks and, and show vaccine cards and not, um, not basically frequent businesses that are, um, that are not you know, doing all these silly things. And so uh, bottom line is I did take Colonel Aguilar. I did set her down about three weeks before I did this, but I took her on head on. And I think she's now in my district telling our people what to do. So I, I am very, very serious about continuing to fight to make sure that, that people in, in the district, I know she has jurisdiction over the military, but I think it's really important for everybody to stand up. Don't virtue signal. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you want to vaccine, that's your choice. But I think that it's very, very important to, to protect freedom and that I, don't you guys believe that our military members who lay their lives down for our country deserve the liberty to be upheld and defended by their commanders? The entire session I got on uh, state affairs, judiciary, health and social services, anywhere where I believe that I could impact uh, vaccine mandates. And because I, I saw it coming, I saw it coming a year and a half ago. That's why I've been fighting so hard. Um, but I will tell you that in the health and social services, um, we had five to zero. My, my amendments got through with, with uh, flying colors, in, informed consent got through. Uh, Etc. So some really good things happened in health and social service. We were able to kill the extended uh, disaster declaration uh, over in the Senate, and then unfortunately it rose back again in uh, House Bill 76. And uh, that's when um, there was. I, we we still work when House Bill 76 came back to the Senate floor. I still continue to fight for immunization rights, and. Um, fighting against immunization uh, passports, et cetera. And I want to thank a lot of the, the amendments did get through, and I really want to do thank a lot of my Senate, Senate colleagues for that. Um, sadly, in Senate finance, I want you to tell you a lot of the good things we did in the lower committees. It got stripped out. Power matters. Finance matters. And they were stripping the most basic things that we were getting done out. And that's why a tiny little handful, what I think special interest kind of have something over them, um, really, really do hold some, some interesting powers down there. In regards to um, on May, May 15th, um, I d did want everyone to know that um, <clears throat> it, it did pass, that, uh, that people, um, I, I wanted to make sure that no one based on your vaccine status could not be denied access or benefits to, to anywhere. So I want to thank the Senate. The Senate passed it many times. So that was interesting. I do want to point out a few people right now. I, you know, wait, I'm just going to point out that Senator Costello, Holland, Hughes, Kawasaki, Michiki, Myers, Reinbold, Shower, Wilikowski, these are kind of the people that were fighting in, in, in the Senate. And then look at the people, a lot of the Democrats and more rhinos, what we consider, were fighting against the most basic rights. So you guys need to know. People don't like that I call them out. I said I will never, ever, as a representative republic, we're not a democracy, we're a representative republic, not talk about people's votes because we represent about 40,000 people for one vote. And that's why I will always do that regardless of how much trouble I get into. So let's move on to the next slide. Thank you, constitutional freedom fighters, Alaskan Chandra Crafoy, 
uh, Alaskans um, for um, constitutional rights, Alaska Patriots, U.S. Parents Involved in Education, Healy Patriots, Taking Back Anchorage, Save Palmer, Alaskans Against Lisa Murkowski, that's got almost 11,000 members. <laughs> <laughs> Kenai Peninsula Unmasked, these are just a few of the many, many groups that I've been working with the last year and a half that have been therapy for me. So uh, thank you for uh, really special people like Shonda Kerfoy. I mean, she helped fight the mandates on the municipal level, but I'll tell you guys, I've worked this day and night. I've been super excited. Also wanted to point out Mayor Bronson. Woohoo! He's a tiger. Mayor Pierce, work with him. He's amazing. Uh, Assembly Member Allard, uh, Dan Fagan. The Watchmen. Also want to point some people that I could count on down there. Senator Showers, Senator Hughes, Senator Holland, Representative Kirko, Representative Eastman, Rep. McKay, Rep. McKay, and Rep. Carpenter. These are the people that rose up and fought hard in the face of tyranny and special interests down there. I know there's others, you guys, but I really wanted to focus on the people that I would go and sit and listen. And the key is all of a sudden they'll have a meeting at 7 o'clock on a Saturday night, and I would make sure, and we would watch. I have awesome staff, Kelly Toth and, uh, and Scott, um, Scott Stansbury. Thank you. Uh, you know, the audiovisual guy, guys, he's awesome. He's gonna, we're going to be posting this. I want to say the special interests are very powerful. Ashna, they're basically, we're killing all of our amendments and killing bills. And, and, uh, and we, we, actually, killing bills is an awesome thing in, 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 down there in Juneau. But Ashna, he basically said the federal administration put forth a notice to intend to make rules requiring all Medicare and Medicare certified health facilities be in compliance, that they be vaccinated. When Sarah Vance, for Sarah, she had the most amazing amendment on the House floor, and, and she wanted a patient advocate by your side, Ashna basically came in there, it's totally illegal, and, uh, and special interests, and they ended up killing House Bill 3006 on the floor, which was a great thing, because of uh, Sarah Vance's amazing amendment, so you go, Sarah. <laughs> This, I just wanted to post that um, ivermectin, they're gouging people at $295, uh, dollars, um, you guys, and the pharmacist's criminal. What they're doing is denying, in my opinion. D not all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, all you great pharmacists like Ramsey Bell that are filling, and Walgreens, there are several of them that are filling, but you guys, it's critical. It's life-saving. I will tell you that I believe ivermectin nipped uh, COVID very quickly. Um, people ask me to expose who's voting which way. This one right here is amendment number five. This is based on vaccine status. You cannot access benefits or services. I kept trying it with every bill that would come up. This was 3006 that just failed on September 10th. Um, but just look at Costello, Holland, Hughes, McChickie, Myers, Reinbold, Revac, Wilikowski, and Wilson. Those are the people that in this case were fighting for you. All the ones in red, Steven, Stedman, Keel, Kawasaki, Baggage, uh, Bishop, Gray Jackson, and Hoffman were fighting against your most basic things. This was, you can, you can discriminate based on vaccine status. Next, um, this is amendment number um, 29. This was personal objections so that you could, you know, and, and even though we didn't need this, I found out later, it was really important for you guys to see that this one did pass, uh, but this was uh, so you could opt out for any reason, religious, anything. So thank the, the green, the, the senators and the green there. Next one I'm going to talk about, this one is vaccine online reporting. I ask for just, let's look at Alaska data. What's happening with our youth, with our military, just Alaska-based data. Look at only four people. Of course, Holland, you can count on him. Um, Hughes, Reinbold, and Shower. only four people wanted Alaska database. All the other senators, the most basic things, sometimes we can't get through there. But you guys, it's not for lack of trying. We're fighting really, really hard. We're almost done here. Um, I also uh, proposed an amendment, the Montana bill. The Montana bill prohibits employers, including hospitals, from discriminating against worker base on vaccine status. And employers cannot require vaccinations um, it basically, it's a protected status. So guess what happened to this? And this also didn't allow immunity passports. Got tabled. Senator David Wilson, Senator McChickie. Let me tell you, I was not a happy camper. Got tabled. We don't do that on the Senate floor ever hardly. I think that's the only time it happened. I can guarantee you there's some special interest behind the scenes. So very, very frustrating uh, in regards to that. What we've done really recently is we pleaded uh, with the governor. Just I uh, want to just point out Kirk Shower, uh, McKay, Rob Myers, Sarah Vance, uh, Costello, Eastman, Reinbold, Hughes, Holland. Are you seeing a trend here? 
Uh, these are the people that ask, please, Governor Dunleavy, fight these mandates and let us put it. Uh, I just, just got a text that uh, DeSantis just called a special uh, session in Florida to fight the mandates. And that's what we ask Governor Dunleavy to do. I am happy that he did that press release today. I will tell you that. So the reason I put this slide in is we put together a very large package of informed consent with all these memos and most of this stuff. If anyone wants to send me or my staff an email, we have business cards in the back. We will give you a nice package so you can help your constituents fight um, because they didn't add it to the special session. We decided we were going to continue to fight. Anyway, I did get permission for Senator Sullivan. He got invited, but he just got stuck in uh, Washington, D.C. I really wanted to do a big shout out for him. He said he takes issue with a Biden vax mandate and ask employers to delay the enforcement. And he says, I think the president is going to lose the case in every court in America. So if you're a business leader, here's my respect request. Hold off, wait for litigation. So go Senator Sullivan. Yeah. Attorney General was able to um, speak. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip that slide. And I will uh, close my portion out by saying those who give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. This is our founding fathers. Someday we will meet them. We, they're going to ask you, what did you do? What did you do? They gave us a firm foundation to stand on. Are you going to keep that salvation? Are you going to let these tyrants come and you do an earthquake, guys? I'm going to call each and every one of you. So please, everybody stand up, engage, and thank you from the depths of my heart.